So today, March 5th, 1770, and we are bringing to you the latest from Boston, Massachusetts, one of the 13 colonies. The colonists had been protesting about the taxes being imposted by Britain. They aren't angry about being taxed, they're, having, they're angry about having no representation in Parliament. Britain has posted many military men in and around the homes of the colonists. They have declared so many new acts and regulations. I understand that the colonists have nicknamed them lobster back. That's because of our egg pelts. And because lobsters are considered fertilizer, only the very poor eat them. They are nothing but insects from the sea. There seems to be a situation rising up around the common house. Let's cut away to Samantha, our reporter in the field. Samantha, what is going on here? Look at this crowd being, beginning to gather over there by the customs house. This is where the money from the hated taxes are, is stored. I see a sentry, a sentry guard standing there behind you. Yes, this is customary. The colonists don't really want to cause an uprising. They just want the parliament to listen. And the soldiers don't really want to be here either. They'd rather be back in Europe. I think that is something beginning to happen over there. Let's take a look. to come with this. I am sure the story won't end here. So, Mr. Adams, tell me what all this news was about intolerable acts. I hear the colonists call them the worst thing ever. Yes, Mr. Curtis, it's all because King George was so angry about the 300 crates of tea we dumped into the harbor that the Spanish British Parliament passed five ridiculous laws. They call them the course of acts. We call them the intolerable acts. It looks like the anger decided to put his foot down. Yeah, he thinks if he punishes us Massachusetts rebels, the other colonies won't oppose Britain. Did you say five acts? Yes, sir. First, they closed the Port of Boston. Then they passed the, Mass the Massachusetts Government Act. The third act is the Administration of Justice Act. The fourth act is the um, Quartering Act. 
the, this one is really making colonists angry, and for good reason. The, f the final act is the Quebec Act. This one's the worst. Could you tell me more about what they mean? I, yes, sir, I could, but I think you could get a better idea off the people in the streets. Good idea, Sam. Let's go to a reporter on the street and see what the colonists have to say about these acts. Sure, Mr. Curtis. I'm here with one of the Daughters of Liberty. What do you think of the British closing the fort of Boston? The king is trying to make our lives miserable, to punish us, only allowing food and firewood in. No hay for the horses, nothing. It's ridiculous. Our animals are starving. We need the hay. No hay, no pay. Ma'am, you there. What do you think of the Massachusetts governor? They say we can't have any more elected officials. The bloody governor will appoint them. And what is even worse than that, the Third Act gives those bloody British all control over the judgment of all crimes. It's a conspiracy to allow them to get away with murder. Really, it's the Murder Act. It's intolerable. What do you mean? All terms of the business of these officials do have crimes of the, will be sent to Great Britain or another colony heard by British judge. It's a sham. They will repeat their punishment for crime, of their crime. I can see where that can be an issue. Ma'am, you there. What do you think of the co quartering act? It, How? it says that we are going to have to give those lobster bags food, shelter, beds, and a whole lot of other stuff. It's intolerable. I can see where that can be an issue. And how does the Quebec Act affect the colonists? It says we are going to send Quebec students south to the Ohio, to the Ohio River and that the French Canadians speak their language, laws, and religion. That's what that's from, and we can't speak this out. Some of the French are leaving. Intolerable. Intolerable! You heard it here, folks. The colonists are not going to sit back and allow these intolerable acts to stand. Thanks, Mr. Dyer. This looks serious. Mr. Adams, it's obvious the colonists are ready for change. Yes, sir. Change is coming. Delegates from all over the country are preparing to meet soon. It will be known as the First Continental Congress. Finally, something tolerable. When King George III in Parliament passed the Stamp Act in 1765, many American colonists decided to boycott English goods. Consequently, the Stamp Act was repealed. But in 1767, the Township Acts went into effect. Taxes were placed on lead, glass, paint, paper, and tea. That, too, was repealed after the colonists protested. Soon, England levied another tax under the umbrella of the G Act in 1773. In addition to being taxed, he could only be brought into the colonies by one company, the East India Company, and sold by government licensed merchants. Let's go to our reporter, Elizabeth, in Boston. Something's going to happen tonight. I don't know what, but you can feel the tension and excitement in the air. The streets of Boston, normally quiet on a win winter evening, are crowded with people. Some are milling about, others in small groups arguing among themselves, and still others shouting anti-British slogans. Relations between England and the American colonies have been strained lately. Now you hear people actually talking about a revolution. Some say they're ready to fight for liberty. Here comes one man. Let's ask him what's going on. Sir, sir, excuse me, sir. Yes, what is it? I wonder, sir, if you could tell me what's going on tonight. Where? Here, on Tremont Street in Boston, Massachusetts. What is your name, sir? My name? Uh, Smith. Mr. Smith. I won't keep you, Mr. Smith, but could you tell me why these people are so angry? I would love to stay and talk, but I am late for a meeting. A meeting? A political meeting? Are you part of the Sons of Liberty? Sons of Liberty? Never heard of them. Now if you'll excuse me. Excuse me, sir. I wonder if you could tell me what's happening tonight. Haven't you heard of the Tea Act? I've heard of it, but... The British are trying to punish us as though we are rude children. Well, we'll show them. Last summer, England passed the Tea Tax. It gave the East India Company the right to determine who could sell tea in the colonies. Only those who profess loyalty to the crown can sell tea. 
Since one million of wheat colonists drink tea twice a day, that amounts to a lot of money. But that's not the main point. The main point is, if Parliament can control who can sell tea in the colonies, it can control, control who sells anything in the colonies. Then, sir, do you advocate a complete break with England? A complete break? Why that would be independence? Why that would be treason? We're honor, honorable people. Uh, England will come to our senses. We can sort out our differences in an agreeable manner. Now, if you please excuse me, I have an appointment with my black suit. Bloody redcoat! Get off our shores! Worse than those Egyptian pirates! No more taxes! And, to, and see if we can find out anything else. What's this? A printing office? The Eddies and Gillis printing shop? I hear raised voices from inside. Let's see if we can... I'm sorry, this is a private meeting. With all due respect, you may not enter here. I was wondering if the Sons of Liberty were meeting here. Sons of Liberty? We're printers. We're discussing ink. What is your name, sir? Uh, uh, Jones. Mr. Jones. Now if you'll excuse me. Down with the king! Down with England! Now let's go to our reporter, Sophia, to see if we can, we can get the British viewpoint from Governor Hutchinson. The governor's residence is down this way toward the harbor. Sophia here with Governor Hutchinson. Sir, I wonder if you could tell us about the viewpoint of the British. First of all, I do not represent the British viewpoint as you put it. I am a Massachusetts man. I have steadfastly opposed the sterner measures taken by the current thus far, but you must remember one thing. We are all Englishmen, and as such, we are subject to the laws of Parliament and the Crown. If we do not like those laws, we may petition Parliament with our grievances, but for now, we must divide them. Some colonists are saying that they should not be taxed by Parliament since they have no leader to represent them in Parliament. No taxation without representation, they say. The Sons of Liberty are saying that it's tyranny. Sons of Liberty? Don't talk to me about the Sons of Liberty. They're radicals. We have mobs on the streets of Boston, and they're being railed up by men like Samuel Adams, Josiah Quincy, and Thomas Paine. Treason is all of them. Don't the colonists have the right to? It? I'll tell you about rights. We as Americans have no rights other than the, the king and parliament to strike guys. Do you know what the Sons of Liberty want me to do? I'll tell you. They demand I send the three tea ships anchored in the harbor back to England. They demand I do this as a protest to the Tea Act. Are you going to do it? I most certainly am not. Those ships have already cleared customs. It would be against the law to send them back now. Um, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do even at this late hour. Are you going to sit here and do nothing? No! Nay! Are you going to sit here by while trying to keep into on injury? No! No? Then what shall I do? Talk? Discuss? Debate? No! We'll act. We'll act this very night. Do you know what they say about us in the South in Charleston, where Patriots unloaded the Triumph's tea into a damp warehouse and let it rot? They say Bostonians are better at resolving what to do than doing what they resolve. Time for talk is fast. What do you say, Samuel Adams? You all know me, do you not? I am that same Sam Adams who has a post tyranny and love liberty. And I say this. Mr. Quincy and I have sent a demand to Governor Hutchinson. It is a simple demand. It says return those tea ships to England. We are committed to this demand. However, we must wait until the governor replies. But know this, if we act, the tyrant will call our actions and he will react accordingly. Sam, the messenger just come from the governor's residence. Governor Hutchinson says he will not return the tea ships to England. Gentlemen, this meeting can do nothing further to save the country. What's this? Indians? Mohawk Indians coming from the finish shop? That couldn't be. They're carrying clubs and tomahawks. And they're, no, they're white men in disguise. They duck in their faces with soot. They're hurrying down Tramont Street. They're headed for the harbor. Something is going to happen. Sir, excuse me, sir, what's going on here? Step aside, step aside. We have no time to talk now. But why are you dressed like that? We're going to see how the king's team mixes with salt water. What? It's salt water? You mean, wait, other men in disguise going in through the side streets headed for the harbor? I wonder. Sir, excuse me, do you intend to attack the tea ships? We're unarmed, we're unarmed as you can see. But you have hatchets and clubs. We mean no harm to any man. We mean harm to King George's tea. They're running now. I try to keep up. Oh no, there's a nine statue at the head of Griffith's Wharf. 
And he bubbles his musket. Is there going to be violence? Halt! Who are you men? What do you want? We want nothing from you. We ask you to step aside, but as you can see, you are far outnumbered. Please step aside. Everyone is tense. What's going to happen? Wait, the sentry has lowered his rifle. He, he's letting them pass now. They're all boarding now. They are all boarding now. I think I know what they're going to do. Yes, they're throwing bales of tea in, into the harbor. They're sweeping the decks clean. What a strange sight this night in Boston. As the king ship is seized by men dressed as Mohawks. I can see them outlined against a pale winter's moon as hundreds of pounds of tea drift away on the tide. Back to you in the studio, Rebecca. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The sense of liberty are climbing back to Griffith's war and scattering in all directions. If there is war, and in it, the colonists win their independence, then we will have witnessed history in the making. In any case, King George cannot ignore the surfman. Something will surely happen now, but only time will tell us its outcome. What's happening out in the battlefield of the French and Indian War, also known as the War with Two Names. What you are about to see is the events leading up to the Revolutionary War, as you read in the beginning. The British won the French and Indian War, but still faced major issues. First, there, there was still conflict with the Native Americans. Additionally, the Crown was in a large amount of debt from spending so much money on the war. The British got support of the Iroquois. Shawnee and Delaware tribes. They then attacked Fort Duchesne and renamed it for Fort Pitt after they captured it. The tide was turning in Great Britain's favor. At the same time, England and France fought each other in Africa, Europe, and Asia, fighting a war on four continents apart. And the war, war lasted seven years because of the length of the war. This was why they, the war was called the Seven Years War. The battle now eminent, British forces approached Quebec. The b battle proved to be a major turning point in the French and Indian War. British General James Wolfe led the forces against the French fortress. The British scaled a cliff and eventually their entire force of over 4,000 men was within striking distance of the French. Then an equally large French force attacked. Eventually the French surrendered the city of Quebec to the British. It proved to be a major victory in the French and Indian War. In 1760, the French surrendered the city of Montreal, which basically ended the war. Great Britain had won the war and the ability to colonize North America.
1750 is the way the British won the war. Both countries signed the Treaty of Paris. This agreement said that France lost most of its land in North America. England now owns Florida, the Ohio Valley, Canada, and all the land along the Atlantic Ocean. The king issued the Proclamation of 1763, which made it against the law for the colonists to settle west of the Appalachian Mountains. Both the Proclamation of 1763 and additional taxes were not welcome news in the American colonies. In 1763, the British won the war. Both countries signed the Treaty of Paris. This agreement said that France lost most of its land in North America. England now owns Florida, the Ohio Valley, Canada, and all of the land along the Atlantic Ocean. This was Washington's only surrender in battle. A disheartened Washington was allowed to return to Virginia, where he would drop his official title and become a, a volunteer assistant in the British Army. The French and Indian War had officially begun. Everybody and welcome back to Patriots Today. We have some exciting news and I'm going to hand it over to Balloon. The British decided that they needed a way to pay back the money that they borrowed from the other countries during the French and Indian War. The way to solve the problem was to have their colonists in America pay taxes to help pay back the money. Now let's go to our reporters in the field. Well, as you can see, this is quite the scene here on the street. I see some soldiers coming in. Let's see if we can interview them and get their recreation. I'm here with David. He is one of the soldiers sent here to maintain peace in the city. What do you think of all these events? Hey, what are you guys so mad about? No competition, no, no competition! This group is out of control. We need them to calm down. We might get a calm reinforcement. The colonists shouted this because they are required to pay British taxes but they have no say in their government. They just have to go along with what the British Parliament says because the colonists are ruled by the king. Let's go out to our reporters again and see the people's reaction, the people's reactions in Boston. I'm here with a local tax collector, Mr. Buxton and his wife. They are also afraid with everything that is happening. The colonists have been breaking their windows and threatening them. Tell us more, Mr. and Mrs. Buxton. I'm just collecting taxes on Jesuit's debts and I continue to be harassed. It's just terrible. I am threatened every day. People are breaking our windows and threatening us. My husband is just getting his job. What are we to do? Yes, this does put you in a difficult position. Taxing the colonists while they continue to have no representation in Parliament. You might want to change jobs. Okay, let's take it back to the to station for a station break. 